We're going to talk about adversary emulation. This is a fairly newer term uh, in the offensive security space. And before we talk about how we got there, I kind of want to talk what we did in the past and what most organizations should be doing. Adversary emulation is a more mature offensive security type of exercise. And we should really be doing the basics, covering our basic hygiene to get started. If you're not doing some of these items I'm going to talk about now, adversary emulation might not be for you. So we start out with vulnerability scanning. I'm sure most of you already do this. You take a scanner, whether you're scanning an IP address or a URL, something like a Nessus or a Nexpose or a Qualys, and you point it to some IP addresses. You hit go and you get a pretty large report back with a lot of vulnerabilities. You can then show those vulnerabilities to the stakeholders and have them patch and fix their issues. Or you can go a step further and do what's vulnerability assessment. This does require someone with some ethical hacking knowledge to go through those vulnerabilities and analyze them as the term suggests. You want to actually verify the vulnerabilities. And when you give a report to your stakeholders, you are giving actual vulnerabilities that you've verified that are not false positive. That way, no one's wasting their time. They're going after and fixing vulnerabilities that have been deemed to actually exist. But that takes a little bit of uh, human power. After that, most organizations will mature to doing penetration testing. The major difference between a penetration test and a vulnerability assessment is that in a penetration test, you're actually going to exploit the particular vulnerability. You're going to get access. That often leads you to a shell or to a some sort of user level access on a system. And from there, you can go a little deeper, identify the correct business risk, go further, maybe even move laterally. But it really depends on the scope. And that's where we see a large difference between traditional penetration testing and the red team. Red teaming is the ability to perform <clears throat> tactics, techniques, and procedures like a malicious adversary would. And it's very difficult to explain these to a number of folks that use these terms back and forth. But most of the time, what we're seeing is penetration tests are limited in scope. They might give you an IP address or a domain or maybe in a range and say, you can only hack these systems. And once you get access, don't do anything else. And we see that quite a bit, for example, when PCI DSS, if you, any of you have done a pen test there, you notice that the scope is quite limited. It's limited to a certain segment and network, but attackers don't have these same limitations. They don't have these rules of engagement. And then as an industry, we've matured to red teaming. Red teaming performs a much wider scope of tests. They often do this through physical uh, testing as well. We created the red team. From there, some organizations might have heard or start doing what's called purple teaming. That is very similar to red teaming, but instead of doing blind tests where your blue team has no idea that you're coming, here you actually plan ahead of time and you work together with the blue teams and the security operations center, the incident response folks, all together seeing and kind of going through each tactic, technique, and procedure. And then you can finally get to a point where you're doing some continuous purple teaming, which is slightly more efficient. Now, as you move through here, I'm not saying one is more important than the other or that you should stop doing the previous. You should definitely continue doing vulnerability scanning, vulnerability assessment, and pen testing. And certain times, based on goals, you will have and perform various different uh, assessments. So adversary emulation, I've defined as the a type of red team exercise where the red team is emulating how an adversary operates. So you use threat intelligence, you understand a particular adversary, and then you do the same tactics, techniques, and procedures with the same goals and objectives as that realistic threat. The goal here is to do a full end-to-end -end attack. You generally start out on the internet, just like a malicious adversary that you are emulating, and you perform the full kill chain, which we'll talk a little bit about in this uh, conversation.